Hello, in this video I'm going to briefly give you some idea of how you might solve the equations that we've presented previously numerically. So I'm going to start with buckley leverett analysis and then I'm going to give you a few hints about how to do the iterative integral in imbibition. So in buckley leverett analysis we can write the equation as follows. But we prefer to do it in dimensionless units and in fact we can even solve the equation in dimensionless units. So don't do it, don't try and solve it in dimensional units, do it in dimensionless units. So then this becomes, we got the fractional flow by ds1 But because it's a numerical solution, we're not going to assume it's a function of just VD. Then you get to the analytic solution. But let's think about how we might solve that numerically. And how we're going to do it is I'm going to introduce finite difference, and this should be familiar to all of you. And the method I'm going to use is it's going to be explicit, and it's going to be single point upstream weighting. So if you you can Google these things. Right, this is not a numerical analysis class. So, OK, so the idea is really quite straightforward, I'd have to say. So imagine I've got a grid and I'm just going to consider three grid blocks. This is grid block I, this is grid block I minus one, and this is grid block I plus one. OK. And what we're going to do is we're going to apply essentially conservation of mass, but in this um, discretized form or in a discretized form in grid blocks. So how do we go about this? Well, we can imagine we have this grid block I and there is a flux in. And we call that F minus because it's to the minus sign, right? I minus one. And we have a flux out that we call F plus. OK. And we've discretized in increments of delta Td and delta Xd. So these will be increments of pore volumes injected and increments between the, the two wells, for instance. OK. So how do we how do we go about this? It's really quite straightforward. The saturation in grid block I at time level, this is the time level, OK, so TD is N times delta TD. So we have time increments and this is time level N and then we move on to time level N plus one. So how do we update saturation, OK, is what the saturation is obviously at time level N. And then we have basically a DF by DX term here, right? We want to have a flux derivative and of course we also know that we're proportional to the time increment, right? The bigger the time increment, the more we're going to update. And we're going to do a df dx, and the spatial increment here is delta x. So there's going to be a delta xd here. OK. So what about the fluxes? Well, we have a flux in minus a flux out. And what we're going to assume, and this is single point upstream weighting, is that the flux that goes in, because we're flowing from left to right, the flux that goes in is the fractional flow evaluated at the saturation in the upstream grid block. And it makes sort of physical sense. You know, the water's coming from here, so the flux should be associated with this saturation. So upstream weighting says that F minus is actually evaluated, the fractional flow, at the upstream grid block, and it's explicit, which means we're using the previous time step. So how it's updated is the previous time step from the previous grid block. And then F plus, well, then it should become straightforward. What I'm going to use for F plus is the same thing, but evaluated at this grid block, not I plus one, but I. Okay. 
So now we can write this in. So what goes in is F1 at S i minus 1 at n, and what goes out is F1 at S i of n. So we can start with a one-dimensional system. Everything is at the initial saturation. At time t equals naught, I can update the first grid block to have my 1 minus the residual saturation, so maximum saturation, and then I can simply update using these dimensionless variables. Right? Because I can update for the new time level, I know what is in the old time level, these are known functions of the saturation at the previous time level. So it's a relatively straightforward solution. There's only one thing to bear in mind. If you look at this, if we're not careful, we can get saturations that are greater than one, right? Because if we make TD too large, so we normally need to make delta TD over delta XD less than one. And normally, you know, more than less than one. Don't make it close to one, okay? You've got to make sure that you don't uh, introduce instabilities. The other thing you will introduce by doing this numerically is numerical dispersion. So whereas the analytic solution, saturation against distance at a given time, may, you know, classic Buckley level look like this with a sharp shock, numerically, of course, this is an approximation of the true derivative. And they're second by, just by nature, right? There's going to be delta x squared terms that you've left out. And so you introduce basically an artificial diffusion. So you will tend to diffuse out your profiles. OK, so you'll get a diffusive profile. The area under the curve will be the same, but you will have a slightly diffuse profile. Now, in principle, you can extend this numerical approach to solve where we have a more complex expression for Q, maybe if you include capillary dispersion as well. What you will find there is that in order to get accurate solutions, you will need to refine the grid blocks enormously. So while you might say, oh, well, I put in capillary di dispersion and then I can look at an imbibition process and I can just do it numerically. Because you don't know a priori exactly how much imbibes, you need an extremely refined grid to get that accurately. So in fact, although a numerical solution works OK for the Buckley-Leverett problem, OK, you smear out the shock a bit with numerical effects, not true physical dispersion, um, you can get a reasonable approximation. OK, so you can you can compare your analytic solutions with your numerical solutions. You can use that to quality control your numerical solutions. But for imbibition dominated processes, you find that this approach, although in principle will work, requires an, a very small time steps, very fine spatial discretization. So the way in which you deal with um, the imbibition problem is to find this fractional flow and then you differentiate it and that finds the scaling as uh, x over root t. So it's sort of assuming a particular type of analytic solution and then evaluating that numerically. So let's just show that again. We had this in the previous video. Your f1 as a function of s1 was 1 minus, and then you had this integral. Right, so let's draw it out again between some value of s1 and s1 star. You had here your value of beta minus S1. You had your D of beta over F of beta D beta. OK, and then there was the constant, but actually the constant we could also write as an integral. So we're going to do that. So the constant can be written as S1 to the initial conditions s1 star, so this is beta minus s1i, because we're at the, in initial, <coughs> the initial conditions times d of beta d beta over f1 of beta. So this is basically the integral all the way to the initial conditions. OK. So how might we evaluate this? OK, it's a numerical. I'm not going to go through numerical integration. It's really standard. You simply area under the graph for known functions. But we do have to iterate with F1. So what we do is we guess, right? So F1, let's say, guess 1, OK? 
We know it needs to be a function that goes between 0 and 1 as the saturation goes from the initial conditions to S1 star. OK, so why don't we start with a linear function and then it's actually got to get this sort of no shock shape as you integrate. So it turns out an initial guess that works really very well would be S1 minus S1i. OK, so it's 0 at the initial conditions and then S1 star minus S1i, so that when we're at S1 star, that equals 1. So that's your fractional flow as a function of saturation. That's your initial guess. You evaluate this integral with this linear form. Remember, this is non-linear, so it's not, a, not straightforward, but it's a known function. You assume you find a new value, F1, that's your second guess. It's not F1 squared, it's your second guess. OK, put that in the integral then find your third guess. Normally by then you've converged, right? Because you're just deviating your fractional flow from a straight line to something with a curvature that I showed in the previous video. So looks a little bit daunting, this integral, um, but it's perfectly possible to evaluate and just an iterative guess. So this is numerical integration, okay? Looks complex, but actually relatively straightforward conceptually. And this is a finite difference approach. And again, relatively straightforward application of this explicit single point upstream weighting. OK, well, we've, we've finished the mathematics and we've spoken about some key people. So I'm going to mention some other names. Leonardo da Vinci. Now you might say, well, what's he got to do with anything here? So let's um, think of some other characters. Um, what about Barack Obama? Um, what about Jimi Hendrix? What have they all got in common? Well, they got something in common with me. They're all left-handed. And in fact, Leonardo da Vinci wrote his notes backwards. So in most of the videos, You've apparently seen me with the right hand, but of course um, they flipped the video. So this this time I'm writing backwards, and so you can see me using using my left hand. And I've, I've always been a great admirer of Leonardo da Vinci. He's not directly influenced any of uh, the videos, and his left-handedness isn't really the main thing. But it is interesting that two people here, an artist and a musician, for whom the use of their hands was particularly important, two of the greatest geniuses actually did it with their left hand. And then the last thing is for additional material on what I've been showing in the videos, you can uh, look at my book. Some of the material now is new. There's no uh, mention of heat transport in my book, but a lot of the mathematical detail and extra examples are contained there. And most of you should have this book either available in physical form or electronically. Thank you very much.